Good morning, everybody. How y'all doing on this wonderful Sunday morning? Uh, we've got in the chat, we've got a uh, trail dust busting me out for a new shirt. Uh, Ulbert Forge, uh, Robert Lonis, Transcendental Artist Studios, Jeff Killian, uh, Jack Pines Blacksmithing. Hello, hello. And I'm sure other people will be joining. Holy cow, my uh, I, my camera's red. <laughs> Chaz Walker, how y'all doing? Let me uh, work on that. Uh, <laughs> I'll work on that with during the yep. how's your week so that I'm not distracted. <laughs> right. What's What's up, Alexis? How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. I had quite the eventful week. Speaking of which, uh, why don't you go ahead and work on your uh, uh, red shift yeah. there? Um, no but, kidding. Um, I had. Uh, yeah, I had. I mean, only worked three days, but you know, still still did pretty decent time wise. Um, let's see, I had a bit of a meltdown, uh, like I don't know, like Sunday or Monday or something like that. I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it happens from time to time. I, I forget to take meds for a couple of days, and then I, I you know go off the rails, and I'm, and then you know the next day I'm like, what the hell's going on? Why did that? Ha uh, yeah, yeah, I, I see what did. I I forgot my pills. Uh, yeah, so that happened, and then uh, I spent a couple days getting uh, evened back out because it's not something where I can just take, uh, 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 go, oh, let me get that real quick. Ah, there we go. No, it, it takes uh, a, a day or three to, to even me back out. And so, yeah, by like Wednesday, Thursday, I was good. So um, there was that. I got out to the shop yesterday. I was going to start on a project for um, a coworker, and um yeah i didn't get around to it i i wound up uh, replacing the headlight bulbs in my pickup for led ones and slaving the left side to the right side uh uh so that because one relay the right right side relay sometimes doesn't kick in and so now e either relay will work both of them and they're both 13 13 watt uh, led bulbs so uh each relay is only uh, um uh pushing 26 watts and uh, the high beams were 55 before so uh no chance of overloading the relay like that um and then as soon as i got done with that and got all my tools put away and and whatnot i was going to uh light a fire and get started on this project and i mean right then the wind started blowing and um one thing about midland odessa when the wind starts blowing it's not just dusty there are rocks in the wind you know i mean like you're, you're getting pelted by gravel it feels like so i was like yep okay i'm done and came inside and this is at like i don't know 11 o'clock yesterday morning and uh and yeah yeah then the, the next thing and i know i've been playing minecraft for 12 hours so you know that's kind of the <laughs> way that goes. uh time just gets away from you and then i was like man it's 11 o'clock i should i should go to bed i gotta do a show in the morning and um and then I started uh, doom scrolling TikTok, and then it was 1.15 a.m., and I was like, okay, I really have to go to bed now. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, there's that. Um, and in and, and the rest of the, uh, oh, the Grand, let's see, uh, uh, this coming week, let's see, tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow morning, I'm taking off to go see the Eclipse. Um, from my house, it's only like an hour drive to the Path of Totality, so... Um, and it's about two and a half hours to the um, uh, the center of the path of totality. Uh, so we're going to, you know, weather permitting, uh, uh, I'm hoping I don't have to make a, a, a big change and, and drive in a different direction. But I did see a, a, a weather warning that covered the entire state of Texas for severe thunderstorms and, and uh, extremely large hail for all day tomorrow. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, I'll check the weather later and, and, and get caught up on it. But I can go in any direction. I mean, it's it's like two hours straight across or four hours down or four hours up. So in any case, that's that's what my tomorrow is going to hold. And uh, Yamez, how was your week? Brutal. Um, well, it is officially springtime, so... Uh, I missed my window of uh, over the winter because it was I was I kept waiting for like extended. We had a mild winter, so it's like I kept waiting for um, 
extended uh periods of cold so that so i can get out there and tear through some uh uh debris piles and and you know do some you know some heavy duty yard work uh without the the snakes and the critters and the bugs and everything but it just never got cold enough to to knock them all out and to get them you know under control so uh now i switch over to springtime yard work which is bugs and fire ants and and spraying down chemicals to keep the vegetation down and in check um so i yeah. have had an idea and i don't know if it'd be considered metalworking i might have to you know uh fabricate some stuff or, or forge some stuff for it but i've got like a one of the old school steel garage doors that one those one piece garage doors you know um it's like a 10 foot by eight foot, you know, or 10 foot by 10 foot, uh, steel plate with some framing that they used to put, uh, and it's just like swings open and slides in, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Um, I got one of those and it's like, I was looking, it's in my yard and I'm like, Oh, I got to cut that up and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, and I was looking at it. It's the perfect size to cover my, uh, windows or my, uh, door to my wind tunnel. And I'm thinking I might fabricate a, a rail and rack system, like a barn door style that I can slide it either over the windows or over the, uh, uh, the doors, the door over there. And two reasons, number one, and the most important as usual, zombie protection, um, three reasons, uh, number two, uh, hurricane protection, you know, um, and number three keeps the sun out because everybody knows the sun just makes me all red. Um, <laughs> but you know, I'd have, I'd have to do some work on it because hanging it up there and leaving it, it will just turn into a, uh, a, a, a track. It will just attract every possible, you know, wasp or mud dauber in the world. Right. Um, speaking of doors and stuff, uh, one thing that I did this week is I, uh, and Alexis, you've been to my house, so you know this, uh, John Burnell, you've been to my house, so you know this, the wind tunnel between, uh, my house and, uh, Jane Jeannie's house, we've got that front porch wind tunnel. Um, I tore out the breezeway. wall on the, huh? The breezeway. breezeway. Yeah. Breezeway. Um, I tore out the wall, uh, on the street side and put a french door in with this the, the a, side opposite the screen door of the driveway right yeah yeah street side um front yard side and uh, uh yeah. so yeah sorry to, to, I mean, to, my mind street side is is on the other side of your room <laughs> right 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 it's, it's technically that's the front of the house even though that's the front of the house and that's the driveway side and then that's the cornfield you know so right, it's like right. i go street side uh uh, front of house driveway cornfield but yeah um but yeah so now i've got I, i've got that closed off and can no, i pet that dog no. <laughs> can i pet that dog <laughs> uh, squirrel but yeah so so the neat thing about that is uh i, I didn't even it's an unintended side effect one of the reasons i don't sit out there a lot or or bring my laptop out there to you, you know game watch movies or do these streams because it's it's a beautiful day out there and i should have thought about it today um is it cuts the road noise down by like 90 percent sitting out there and obviously the breeze and if i have the door closed there's no wind going through so um yeah i very may well start doing some shows out there it's it's you know a real nice little area and it's outdoors so it's you know natural light instead of you know those lights those lights that light and then having to have the the blinds open and that's why my uh color keeps changing is because these bi blinds the winds keep blowing the the blah 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 whatever <laughs> um what a boring week. I get excited about putting a door in. I suck. 
I did get out to the shop last week. I don't know if y'all knew that or not. I did. Yeah, yeah, that that was uh, uh, fun. Yeah, uh, I kind of want to talk about that design thing here real quick before we get into the topic, the design of my boot scraper. Obviously, I did a very quick job on it to finish the, you know, something like that. I could have easily gone to take my time on it and, you know, spent a few hours working on it and preparing it and, and making it look very clean. Um, I, You know, looking at the piece, I know exactly what I could have done better. Um, what I could have done different to uh, get rid of the, you know, nasty scarf little area that, you know, was cut but not dressed out. I, you know, things that I could have done to uh, do the scrolls better. Obviously more even, more measuring. Um, but, yeah, you know, all in all, the whole idea of doing that was not to, uh, it, it was to be like, okay, here's a one-piece boot scraper with scrolls, you know, like, no welding, no connections, no nothing. Just to take a bar, take a bar, make a boot scraper, you know. <clears throat> Obviously, I did, that piece isn't going to win any awards, but I don't know. Maybe you, I'll. You started from scratch just a couple hours beforehand, without like I mean, you know, everybody else had the entire month to uh, uh, to think about it and prepare and and uh, design and build and, and you got yeah. three. Hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think you did, I think you did a good job for being uh, uh, under the gun like that. Yeah, and that's and that was a thing. I just it's like I wanted to finish. I wanted to have a um, usable boot scraper by the end of the show. You know, like I said, I if I had if I had the time, you know, I could have uh, uh, had it nice, neat, and finished, and and a polished piece. Um, but I also didn't want to like start it halfway you know like two hours before the show and then turn the show on and then have you guys be like oh my god it's almost done already all he's doing is decorative work you know and jack did a 75 hour stream on his boot scraper oh i i wish i had the time to do 75 hour streams again that, those were nuts god, remember my long Sorry. streams yeah, I was so proud of Jack. He's like, I don't think I'm going to get it done. I'm like, Jack, you can do it. Come on, you, you don't have to go in and, you know, <laughs> keep going, keep going, power through. Yeah, you're going to be sore tomorrow, but it'd be all right. And he got it done. Yeah. So. Yeah. L really, I guess the only person that kind of came up short was uh, on was, uh, uh, uh uh, but he got rained out, so I think he finished it like the next day or whatever. He did a pretty good job too. So I mean, like, uh, and it's just one of them things. It's like you can't really control the weather, and he he doesn't have an inside forge. He's he's outside, so you know, yeah. it's like if it starts raining, yeah. there's not much you can do about it. But, Wait, who who says you can't control the weather? Come on, really? He can't, noob. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, I mean, <clears throat> crop, uh, 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 I was seeding, but you know, fly, fly around and spray, spray a little silver nitrate. Yep, 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 yep. Good morning, Rob. Good, you know, and good morning, Deranged. Let me uh, roll through the chat real quick and say hello. Uh, Robert Whitney, what up? Um, Yes, deranged metalworks. <coughs> yeah, exactly. You can't control the weather. Look at yeah, exactly. I don't know if you're insulting me, Trail Dust, or not. Shut up. <laughs> Pretty sure I know. But, but yeah, so I mean, it's honestly beautiful weather. I am going to try to get out and do a stream again tonight. Um. What? Two in a row? Oh my gosh! Well, here's the thing, because I know it's going to be... It, we had a mild winter, so it's going to be a hot summer. My intention last summer with uh, uh, pulling the streams was it was a hot summer, and it was it was like, man, this is just... I can't get out there. In, in addition to that, it's like I had some stuff coming up that was making me a bit busy. And with uh, uh, 
pausing the streams, it's like I did get really busy. I got a lot of stuff that I've been working on. And that kind of took took over. And, and it still is. It's it's like tonight I've got um some stuff going on and I've got to check timing and everything. And then uh yeah, I know next Saturday I've got uh some stuff going on. So my point being is it's like I did the idiot thing and when I paused my streams I, I had another time slot and then I filled that time slot. And so now I'm trying to balance to reclaim that time slot. You know. So fair enough. With that I believe uh Rob Huff was gonna hop on and give us a uh, rundown of what an anvil is. An anvil is something that uh, Brian Brazil and the Brazil Nuts use to strike metal on another piece of metal. They put a handle on an anvil and just go, uh, uh, uh. no, am I wrong? I'm probably wrong. Rob, am I wrong? <laughs> I'm just playing with you. Um, and Cam looks like I've got jaundice. Oh no. What's up, Boar? So yeah. Natural lighting. Maybe I should take care of my liver or kidneys or whatever it is. Kidneys. Um but yeah, so uh uh this is sort of like just a a primer anvil or primer to to, to the topic of anvils. Uh, we're doing anvils in their various styles and uses and, and, you know, uh, you know, possibly some deep delves into the history. I know Adam's got some surprises for us over the course of April because April starts with a anvil starts with a let's go, you know, and he, and he just finished uh, the section on his new book about anvils. So, uh, it's all fresh in his brain. So he's going to have all kinds of good stuff come, uh, uh, next week. Yeah. You know what he's doing? He's taking advantage of it. He's writing, uh, uh, writing the chapter chapters and sections of his book based on our topics so that like, you know, like, yeah, we better be featured. <laughs> uh, Holland just sent uh, Rob Huff a hundred pound double horn for a super secret project. So today's stream is going to be lit. Cool. Um, but yeah, so uh, I've, I've actually got a uh, history of Anvil uh article up uh, history of anvils history and the development of andals andals anvils uh the most ancient tools development since the beginning of time let's go way back like we did last year uh, <laughs> firstly what is an anvil like i said this is an anvil primer so we're going basic uh cuz i am a basic <laughs> it is a heavy object of durable material that resists the inertia of an object hammer or mechanical ram while supporting mere material struck by the moving part the earliest anvil was heavy stone used to resist the movement of an object struck against it or struck while supported on it this is such a basic tool that both birds and monkeys uh, have been observed using a stone as an anvil and probably predated man's use of tools this would make the anvil the first tool. Pretty cool, actually. You think about it. Speaking of, you know, the world's first uh, prostitute. Never mind. <laughs> okay. I'll shut up. In the beginning, there was an anvil, and all there was was an anvil. No, I'm just kidding. I made that up. Uh, the first tool is so basic it predates, predates man by millions of years. Prior to man the tool maker, Early man probably pounded grains, nuts, bones, or bones on a rock anvil to get the contents, much as other animal, animals have done for millions of years before. I, I was going to say, you ever seen an otter laying on its back with a stone on its belly and it's like uh -huh. beating it on, on, on the rock, you know what I mean? So, oh, exactly. Like, like by definition, that rock becomes an anvil, you know, it's, it's, it's great when you really think about it. Um, but unlike those animals, man picked up another stone and struck things between, using, you know, making it a hammer and an anvil. Over time, the mortar and pestle developed for grinding grain, and during the Stone Age, 
uh, an anvil stone was used as part of the stone tool making process, you know, for like chipping and, and all that stuff. Um, the first metal work was using native metals such as gold, silver, copper, and perhaps some small amounts of iron. We covered that all last year. Um, these were worked with bone and stone tools, stone anvils, and stone hammers. So the first metal work was done on stone anvils. These were often natural, but may have been worked stone. Um, yeah. And then it just says Zulu image. This article is a PDF. So <laughs> stone anvils were used well into the 20th century by primitive peoples in various parts of the world, such as by the Zulu in Africa. A uh, hundred and fa uh, the that's a whole bunch of nonsense words. Oh, it's a description of a, a picture that it's not existing in the article. Never mind. Um, at the beginning of the metal smelting stage, stone anvils would have continued to be used until the metal was affordable. During the Bronze Age, forging was largely drawn on edges and decorations of cast items. Small bronze anvils were used. Uh, the small... Another picture description. Whatever. Okay, this article... Whatever. Um, at the beginning of the Iron Age in the West... The anvil had to develop all over again. Wrought iron, the wrought iron cultures would no, could no longer make anvils the same way they had in the Bronze Age by casting. The new anvils made of the rare new material and had to be forged. Stone anvils may have been used for, the sh for a short time as the new metal could not be worked on the lower temperature melting or the lower melting temperature bronze anvils. Yeah, you can't make a you know, that, that gap between, you know, Bronze Age and Iron Age. You can't craft an iron anvil on a bronze anvil. That just doesn't work. So go, going back to stone, it all starts with rocks, you know, much like the rocks in my head. Um, the metal working process was also different. Iron is forged to shape hot, where bronze was cast to shape and only finished or decorated by on the Bronze Age bronze anvils, where most work was done cold. So early Iron Age anvils were very simple in shape and slightly heavier than bronze anvils. Over time, the anvil would grow in size, and or grow in size and complexity. You know, um, so yeah, like the earliest, you know, just a chunk of steel with a flat top. You know, my bakos. Woohoo! <laughs> Big ass chunk of steel. Uh, that's the, actually the end of that article. Yay! Finally. Um. Before I go on, I've got a, a you know structures of modern anvils and you know London pattern, which is uh, uh you know really kind of like when 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 somebody thinks of an anvil, even at a young age, they see like the old uh, Looney Tunes cartoons and dropping an anvil and all that stuff. Uh, it's always always the london pattern anvil with the horn the heel uh the feet the, the the splayed feet you know um more detailed drawings always include a hardy hole uh that in my opinion that shape just makes it kind of an all-around useful for the useful tool for the different uh techniques in blacksmithing but like depending on what you're doing you know literally just a saw a sawmill anvil is a, a, a sawyer's anvil is just a big square chunk of steel because all they're doing is is hammering flat and, and all that you know they're not doing any curves they're just working basically plate um yeah same with like a, a bladesmith's anvil you know or the stake anvils for uh uh you know, Vikings, it's, it's just a square with a spike on the end. You hammer it into a log and, you know, you work your swords there. Because um, as you know, an anvil doesn't need to be, the the face of an anvil doesn't need to be bigger than the face of the hammer. doesn't need to be. Um, the most important thing is the mass. So those stake anvils, while they in and of themselves may be only like 15, 20 pounds, would that be a fair assessment there, Alexis? Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's like you're you're securing them into a possibly, you know, a couple hundred pounds log, you know, and then you have that plus the ground and you've got a decent anvil, 
uh, for some basic, it's the whole premise behind how you can use a, uh, sledgehammer head as an anvil. If you secure it down to something solid, you know, uh, you're adding the mass to it by doing that. Um, but yeah, so, uh, depending on what you're doing, you don't need, uh, a fancy anvil like to all you beginners out there you don't need to rush out and have your first anvil be a london pattern anvil you can run to the scrapyard and you know look around and see what they have and just grab a big ass chunk of steel you know secure it down it's why uh, uh rail anvils you know the, the railroad uh rail anvils are popular or became popular they're a cheap alternative and it always cracks me up when I see on, you know, uh, 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 Craigslist or, or, you know, Facebook marketplace, you know, it's like, Oh, I've got this anvil, uh, 300 bucks. And it's, it's, it's a 15, 15 inch, uh, cut off of, of, you know, railway rail with a sharpened end. It's like, the, the, Man, the, I, have the, seen that. I have seen that so many times. Oh my God. <laughs> how much they go for and they, they come across a railroad track anvil and they're like, Oh, you know, and they think it's the same. You know, I don't, I don't think they had it occurs to them what it is, but I mean, yeah, it works, but three, you four, know, I've, I've, I've seen them upwards of $500, like super rare, you know? And I'm like, uh, okay. I got three of those. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's nuts. Uh, uh, the, um, the pawn shop over in Elizabeth city, they've got, a uh, um, last time I was in there, they had a, uh, I want to say it was about 15 inch. It was a, uh, rail anvil made of just standard rail, nothing, no, not crane rail or anything spectacular. It was just standard, normal size rail. And <laughs> they had a price tag. They had it tagged antique anvil, 350 bucks. So, and, and uh, uh, Kevin, hold on. Uh, I can joke real quick. Uh, uh, so Kevin uh, said, uh, uh, said he's going to think about getting a Doyle anvil from uh, Harbor Freight, and, and his middle name is Doyle. I was like, does that mean Keith can introduce you and be like, this is my brother Doyle, and this is my other brother Doyle? <laughs> right. uh... so is that New Heart from the New Heart Show, Daryl? This is my brother Daryl, this is my other brother Daryl? No? Nobody ever saw that? Never mind. What? what? Sorry, I zoned out. Yeah. To be fair. To be fair. To be fair. To be fair. Um, but yeah, so I, I brought it up to the to the lady at the counter, you know, and I'm like, I just, you know, because she also she's the, the owner of the place, and I'm like, I'm just curious how you guys priced this anvil. Or this uh, uh, piece of scrap metal, this anvil, at three hundred and fifty dollars. She was when I looked up the price of what anvils are going for. And, you know, it's yeah. I, I, they went with ten dollars a pound, and it's a thirty dollar or uh, a thirty five pound chunk of steel. You know, and they went with ten dollars a pound. Uh, and I told her, I said, <laughs> that's probably worth scrap prices. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I mean. Um, so again, I have whole videos and I still get views and comments on them. Uh, my, my anvil alternatives, um, all of which fall under the heading of anvils. Even as we found out earlier in the show, uh, the one that I did a, with a brick or a piece of granite or a, a, a stone, like th- those are anvils. It's by definition, a item with mass that you hit another item. Boom, boom, that boom, boom, boom. boom. I was gonna grab my stuffed anvil, but that's not its item of mass. <laughs> so, um yeah, you got anything to throw in before before we start going into the different uh styles and discussions on I just kinda had a question. Um that's more like philosophical maybe why do you, why do why do people find it necessary to name anvils like i it's, like i i've never 
have never understood the naming of inanimate objects, giving inanimate objects human names. Like people name their car, people name their their big truck, you know, people name their anvil. And I'm just like, you know, I call mine the mouse hole, the Holland, the 4140 Harbor Freight, and the cast iron Harbor Freight. I mean, like, I'll, I will say this: if I had a Holland anvil. If I had to give them, if I had to give them all a, a human name, I'd never be able to. I'd be like my mom talking about us and the kids. Whatever your name is, you know, I'd never get it straight. <laughs> I'll tell you, if I had, uh, oh, that, that mic is too close. If I had a Holland Anvil, I would, I would legitimately name it Spider Man, you know, because of Tom Holland. Oh, no, that uh, is. okay. <laughs> the last three Spider-Man movies. I, I haven't seen. Them. Okay, get out from under your rock. I read the comic books when I was a kid, but you know. Yeah, Tom Holland, the actor, played Spider-Man in three uh, really good movies. Um, yeah. heard of <laughs> the Avengers era Spider-Man. Um, but anyway, uh, why philosophically you? or somebody would name an inanimate object. Um, attachment, you know, when you think about it psychologically, it's attachment. It's, it's a, uh, you know, a larger investment thing, you know, like a, 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 an anvil is an investment. A car is an investment. Hell, some people name their houses, come down to the beach here. You, you've driven down by the beach with me. They all have, all the houses have names, you know, yeah, yeah. um, it's, it's, it's the human psychology of anthrom anthropomorphizing anthropomorphizing uh, inanimate objects. It's it's just something humans have done uh, for such a long time, you know. So plus, it's fun. It's a it's a way of identifying things. Yeah, and, and I think, but I think it, it I, I think as a method of identifying something, it, it is less precise. Okay, what if you had two Holland anvils? Exactly, the one's a one ninety, and the other's a two ten. Or, or what if you've got anvil. two? What if you've got two hundred pound Holland anvils? What would you do? Then I don't. Then then there's no point in uh, uh, speci specificity because they're identical. Okay, you'd be like, all right, I'm using, you know, uh, this one today. Right. Or would you just be boring and be like, I'm using one of my hundred pound Hollands today. Yeah. What What I about mean, the I other one? Won't, won't Won't she get lonely? Uh, okay, so so using it in uh, 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 in the first person when you're talking to yourself or, or or whatever, I can see that. Like you know, when you're when you're uh, okay, maybe I don't know. Not I, I realize not everybody has full blown conversations in their head all day long with other people, um, but uh, uh, some of us do. And like you know, I can see when you're if you're if, if like if, I, if I'm having a conversation with Yamez in my head out in the shop. Uh, uh, if I said you know if I had a, a name for my anvil and I said that name in my head, Yamez would automatically know what I'm talking about. But in real life. If I saw, if I, if I was like, hey, lay those uh, uh, lay those tongs on uh, Sue, and he'd be like, what? Sue. Well, if I knew your anvil's name was Sue, the one over in the corner, not not the one uh, out here in the middle, you know, or, all right. or whatever, you know. So, so here here but, you go. You know my that, anvil's name. Huh? You you know my anvil's name. Uh, no, I don't. Yes, you do. Dig deep. No. Um. It's a Fisher uh, anvil. It's a, it's, a, it's a play on the name of the anvil. Uh, uh, uh huh. Carrie Fisher. Yes. Carrie. My anvil's name is Carrie Fisher. So if I were to say, you know, uh, can you move Carrie over a little bit, you know, give us some room, you would know exactly what I'm talking about. No, I, I actually would have to think about it for a minute. Just like I, I, I had to, I had to sift through the rolodex of information looking for. It's like I know it has to do with the type of animal it is, and I'm like, Ch -ch 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 -ch. it's a fisher, Ch -ch 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 -ch. Carrie. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyways, 
Yeah, no, I mean, it's just it's just something that that uh, uh, I I don't I mean, like I don't have a problem with it. I just don't understand it. That, that's all. I'm just saying I don't I don't I don't understand uh, 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 why humans give human names to things that aren't humans. Like even uh, uh, um, like not so much animals. Like pets is a little bit different because they actually you can call them by name and they respond. Uh, you know, most of the time, anyways. I mean, obviously, your your snake doesn't uh, come slithering over when when, when you're like, uh, "Hey, Pascal, come on over here," you know, or, or 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 anything like that. But you know, dogs, cats, pigs, cows, horses. You know, uh, the the mammalian variety can respond to to a name. Yeah, I don't know. It's just it's just the thing that that, that I find um, odd. I mean, I like, like, and, 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 and honestly, I think more people do that with naming things than don't. It's just, you know, it's something that I find is odd and, and peculiar. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, that, there was that squirrel, you know, I, yeah, I, what, I what's up, what's up first degree. How you doing, Josh? Now I would like, I would like to address a couple things. Number one. Uh, who was it was saying? And Trail Dust making fun of us. And Anvil Primer about anvil names. Hey, at least this squirrel's about anvils. So shut it, Trail yeah, Dust. I, I really, I mean, like I could, I could have gone off on what's your bacon score, Kevin? Okay, you know. Yeah. Mine's two, by the way. Mine's one. Oh, you met Kevin Bacon? Mm-hmm. Huh. Oh. I met Drew Barrymore. Oh, there you go. And she worked with Kevin Bacon, so. Yeah. But that was a long, long time ago, back when we were seventeen. Yeah. Anyways, um, yeah. So, uh, were you, where were you going with the starter anvils and whatnot before I uh, I squirreled this off on anvil name? I, I, I like this squirrel. I want to chase it more, but you're right. Kevin's getting a bit uh, wiggly, but I am I am getting somebody uh, said uh, Jack Pine says I'm starting to convince him. So I kind of want to press the issue. <laughs> if you give your anvil a name and begin to treat it with respect, you will get better quality work out of it. Your anvil will truly re start responding to you. That, you know, Much like a plant will grow when you are kinder to it. Your anvil will produce uh, a, a more pure ring, a more uh, you know, sustained... Um, rebound if you're nice to it talk to it converse with it you know ask it how its day was i mean it's like you're sitting there beating it out all the time you, the least you can do is be a bit kinder to it you know so there's that um yeah you gotta preheat the oven before you stick yeah, in the gotta, turkey gotta make, sure you, gotta make sure you warm her up for yeah there's you know buttons you gotta push and you know it's, it's all in the technique you know Got to make sure that <laughs> leave the hearty hole alone. <laughs> um, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> um, oh, you chat is messing me up. So yeah, you know, the, it's like back to at, uh, anvil styles. We talked about like the Sawyer's anvil, and obviously we've got the. Uh, uh, the London pattern with the horn, the heel, the pritchel hole, the, uh, the hardy hole, um, waist feet, all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, then, then you've got some of the oddball anvils, like the bridge anvils where it's, it's to me, I look at them and it's like, they're kind of counter intuitive when you've got feet and then a, a gap in the middle and that's what you, and then it's just a flat, flat top. It's like, Hmm. You know, stop it, trail dust. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it, it, the one thing that was explained to me about, uh, like a bridge pattern, um, was like when you're working on, uh, something like a pitchfork, you know, it's like you can have part of the project slip underneath it while you're working on it. And, and, and the only thing that, that I thought of when I, was told that was well you could use the heel of the anvil to do the same thing and that went right back to uh london pattern yeah that way of thinking that that's the anvil 
um, seemingly the London pattern anvil has kind of become the, you know, all around can do anything, uh, any project style anvil, especially with the, 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 uh, addition of the Pritchell hole, because you can build, uh, bottom tools that slip into it. Uh, but I'd imagine, you know, an anvil bridge, uh, before, uh, the London pattern became, you know, more widespread was that's kind of how they, you know, like, Hey, I need to get stuff under here so that I can work this, blah, blah, blah. This is in the way. So you don't have the convenience bend or whatever, uh, every little piece. Um, and, and I don't know, uh, but that may be how bridge anvils first got started. I have to look it up and I'm not going to do research while mid show. Um, but yeah, you know, um, let me see. Uh, your message was removed. I think the last message I see from you, uh, first degree is my name. Mine is named. Hey, button. But yeah, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I don't yeah, see any it. message that was removed by, uh, moderators or anything like that. No. And, uh, yeah, nothing, uh, nothing came up for approval either. So, yeah, uh, um, it usually says, we would, see, we would still see it if it, if it did. Uh, so it might've been too long. If you, if you, if you type beyond the limit of the, uh, I don't know. I mean, cause I've had that happen, but yeah, even, even if, uh, it was removed by YouTube, it would let us know we would be able to see it uh pro tip for our uh, moderators you can you know uh put something in and then just say a swear word and it will go to uh uh review and we can see it but the chat can't <laughs> don't start doing that i will start showing how nasty you guys can be oh if it was a if it was a link that wouldn't come through i don't think right uh, I think a link just won't become a link. No, I don't. I don't think it goes through at all. I, I, I hmm. could. I can't test it because we're all freaking. We all got wrenches, but uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if, if that's what it was because uh, uh, Josh is saying is uh, uh, one people at uh, uh, at the new. I don't know. Oh, got a hammer in coming soon. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Um. Yeah, I will try to, I've got to really watch my spending this year. It's, um, I want to make it to quad state, but it's dependent on a lot of factors. Uh, I know I jokingly said, uh, um, I jokingly said, I ain't driving over the mountains, but like it, it legit is dependent. It's been a slow few months for, for, uh, my day job. So, um, I've got to really make some financial decisions. Hey, at least, at least you got millions in uh, crypto, right? Soon. Some <laughs> of it, I can't touch some, some of it. It's not mine. When, when Lambo Yamez, when Lambo. Oh, shit. When the TVL uh, comes to uh, Shibarium. <sighs> and I got a truckload of steel to bring. Um, oh, yeah. Which, which is still in my truck. I have not removed it. <laughs> but that's par for the course. Hey, you can go without food for weeks. Quad state is more important. I, I totally agree. Yeah, you're telling that to a fat guy. I like food. But, but yeah, so. Um, for your gas money again. <laughs> what? I'm just messing with you. I will say I'll probably have to uh, cancel Hulu. That's 20 bucks a month now. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. But yeah, so uh uh I never I never did finish watching the strain though. Oh man. 
Well, I'll teach you how to use pirate sites so you never have to pay for streaming services again. Right. Yeah. I still got to I still got to I still got to watch the very last episode of Dexter New Blood. <laughs> Is that on Hulu? Uh, uh, no, it's I was watching it on that uh, the pirate site thing. Okay. It was yeah. just it was just such a pain in the butt with so many pop-ups and everything like that. I just I was just like oh, I can't do this. Get ad blocker plus. Yeah, that there that's actually a fair point there uh uh Kevin, you know, if Yama has canceled smoking, uh uh he'd have the gas money in a, in about a month. What's what's canceling smoking? You mean quitting? Yes. I'm not a quitter though. No, well, I mean Neither am I, but I did it. Well, then you're a quitter. No, I'm a stopper. <laughs> Stop. How's that, how's In the never... name of love. <laughs> Quitting means you're never going to do it again. Stopping means I'm not doing it right now, but maybe someday, you know, I'm not going to leave it outside the realm of possibility. So. Like, I can't say I'm not going to be sitting around a campfire when, like, oh, man, give me one of those. <laughs> I stopped when I went to, never mind. But uh, when I got out, it was like, give me, uh, I, was, I think I smoked one pack in the day. Um, but anyway. Uh, you know, the best part is it is not waking up and, and, and coughing and hacking and, and all of that. Like, that stuff stops after, like, a month, you know? Oh, it's nice. Now I had now I had been hitting a, a vape on occasion for uh, uh, oh, oh, oh a couple months now three three months I guess and uh, I stopped that about last week I guess um, yeah about a week ago just because I mean at one point I was sitting there playing Minecraft and uh, and I realized it was eight p.m. and I hadn't uh, uh, <laughs> I hadn't eaten all day I hadn't hit the vape and I was like hmm, I guess I just won't. But you know what I mean? But everybody's different. And, you know, I mean, I, it just, yeah, I didn't mean for it to happen. It just kind of happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> First degree forge is saying he's got a job for me, a paying job. Need electric ran to a new shop. Let me ask one question. How long, how far of a distance from the shop to the, to the uh, panel? Because let me tell you, most people cannot afford me when it comes to, you know. Oh, I could afford you. <laughs> oh, you mean, you mean, you mean, you mean for electric. Ah, oh, sorry, my bad. thought we were talking about that, that first profession thing again. <laughs> a hundred foot trench is just, it's a thousand bucks just for me to, you know, use a shovel and clear it out or dig it down to the proper depth. Um, and then it's the cost of material and then it's the cost of installing material. <laughs> when it comes to electrical, I am not cheap. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, uh, Eric's, like, saying, you know, so a couple that quit smoking, they bought a new truck and a fifth wheel a couple months later realized they spent a truck payment a month on smokes. I could see that, like, especially like, uh, 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 like, you know, Adam smokes. And, and I think what down in there in there in Australia, it's like $25 a pack, something like that. Uh, I mean, here I was, I was spending 10 and I mean, like I can remember, I, the mo I think the most I ever smoked was a half a pack a day, but that's still a lot. Uh, but you know, ever since it's, I don't know, maybe the last three years since I started transitioning and and then taking the happy pills, I'm down like two to three cigarettes a day. Sometimes now, you know, obviously sitting around with other people and drinking it, there's a lot more. But um, but yeah, I mean, that's you know, it's a couple hundred bucks a month. Start a stud service every Tuesday could be senior citizen go. discount day. Yeah, I already do that, but that's more of a hobby. <laughs> that's messed up. Yeah. <laughs> how how old do you got to be to get the senior citizen discount? Oh, a consulting fee is more. It co actually, a consulting fee, uh, Josh, actually costs more than to actually have me do it because, um, yeah, reasons. 
<laughs> no, in all seriousness, if you call me with questions, I'll I'll be glad to answer them. But uh, uh, I don't dig a trench unless I absolutely, absolutely have to. I dig enough of them as it is. I would like to do a, uh, uh, the hydro trenching setup, but that's expensive. But anyway, mm. yeah. damn, we got pulled off onto so many. One of our squirrels actually was about anvils. The other one was about, you know, quad state gas money and electrical work uh, and then smoking. So many topics flying around. Um, that brings us to final thoughts. I believe next week, Adam will... Uh, regale us with if you want to learn where to find an anvil eric you're gonna have to tune in next week oh <laughs> i ain't giving i ain't giving all the juice away for free or, or on, in eric. the first it's, show it's get anvils at the getting place yeah you get anvils where you get anvils so we move on to our final thoughts um and kind of a we're getting back to topic. Final thoughts. Um, Mr. Jack Pines has uh, his uh, April um, blacksmith challenge thing he needs to work on. Yeah, and that's uh, that's going to be a that's going to be a fun one there. Uh, uh, you know, Thirty six inches of angle iron. That's it. That's all you got to work with. Any thickness, any any size up to two inches. And what's inches what do you have to make? Whatever you want. You can okay. whatever you want. Anything except for the iron or additional thing you can add to it is a rivet. Uh, if you if you use hot collars, uh, the collars have to come from the 36 inches of angle iron. Okay. I know what I'll do. I'll make a one-piece uh, boot scraper out of angle iron. <laughs> just, just make two cuts, fold it over, and stuck it in the ground? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I might actually think of something for that because it's like I've got angle iron. And it's it's always fun to work with, you know. Hmm. Sorry, I'm thinking on it. So, final thoughts, uh, Alexis. Throw me some final thoughts on what you thought about, uh, you know, our little anvil primer. Um, yeah, well, you know, honestly, I wasn't even paying attention. Uh, I, I was with the, with the names and then, and then with the, 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 the Kevin Bacon bit. And then, you know, I mean, uh, I was trying to be more entertaining and, and, you know, uh, than, than informative because I mean, honestly, we got nothing on, on what Adam's going to have next week. So, yeah, you know, I, we were just kind of having a conversation. I, that's the way I look at it. I mean, it's just like, Hey, let's just throw some stuff back and forth and, uh, see what sticks to the wall and, uh, you know, whatever. So yeah, the, the, this week, this week was just kind of a, uh, like, Hey, this month we're, we're talking about anvils. And, uh, today I got the, the, why do people name their anvils out of the way? Because that's really been bugging me for a while. And, uh, yeah. So I hope to see you guys next week. I hope to see you guys tonight during Yamez's live stream, actually. Uh, and I'll probably catch you all over at Jack's here in a little bit. So um, y'all stay cool. Like uh, 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 Josh says there, so stay cool and uh, see you next week. Yamez, your final thoughts. My final thoughts is... Uh... Anvils are interesting, you know, it's, it, it seems like such a simple, basic thing. Um, but when you really consider the anvil, it's, you know, you're talking about the first tool. You're talking about, uh, you know, an item that shaped and defined an entire species, you know, uh, over the years. And when you really go into how that specific tool uh, has evolved um, or rather how little it has evolved when you th really think about the ba base mechanics of it, uh, it's just an amazing thought experiment, you know? So yeah, it's, it's, it's fun to, 
you know, my final thoughts on it. It's, it's fun to take something that you take for granted and, and really deep dive in, into what brought it into being, you know, I'm losing an earbud. So, uh, so yeah, uh, with that, you know, um, Thank you all for showing up. Thank you all for putting up with us. Don't forget to uh, tune in to Jack Pine's Blacksmithing uh, starting here uh, just after we go on or a little bit after. I'm not certain with, uh, with our time change what t uh, he changed his time to, whether it's 12 or 1230 Eastern. Um, but yeah, uh, love that you guys show up day in or you know week in and week out. And we will be back same time next week with Adam uh, discussing anvils in April. And also, I may go live tonight. We'll see. But with that, guys, y'all have a wonderful day. Uh, get out to the shop and uh, make something for yourselves. And uh, yes, make something for yourself. It's not making something for somebody else. What did they ever do for you? Uh, make something for you um yes you yep. have a wonderful day no, 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 no.